Okay, good morning, uh, dear students. Uh, today is 29th January 2020. The day is Friday. My name is Farhan Mazar, and right now I am with the 10 Cambridge class. The subject we are studying is Physics 5054. And today we are going to solve a, a question. And this question is from May, June 2016 paper. This is a theory paper. We call it paper two. And we are solving it section B. And we are going to solve in this, in this session only one question. That's the question number 12, which is showing on your screen right now. This is uh, from the paper, May, June 2016 to 1, question number 12. The overall stopping distance of a cyclist, cyclist is made up of two parts, as shown in the figure 12.1. The distance the cyclist travels during the reaction time of the cyclist, the thinking distance. The distance the cyclist travels after the brakes are applied, the braking distance. State the energy change that occurs during the brake. Okay, so before we start working on this question, remember whenever the whenever you are, for example, for example, in this question, you are riding a bike. And if you are riding a bicycle and when you apply brakes and the cycle stops, uh, it involves two, two, two portions. The first portion, that is the thinking process. For example, if you saw a hurdle or any hazard in your way or any obstacle in your way, when you saw it, and then your mind will process it, your brain will process it, and then he will command your, he will send the message to your hands to apply brakes. So when you saw the hurdle and when you press the brake, during that, during that, this is the reaction time, the time passes. This is reaction time, and during this, the cycle covers some distance. That is called thinking distance. You saw the thing, an object in your way, and your body did the reaction, and you applied the brake. Means you press the brake. So that is called thinking distance. Then the second portion of that braking thing is uh, the braking distance. You see. Uh, when you have applied the brakes, the cycle do not stop immediately. When you have pressed the brakes, the cycle will cover some distance and then it will stop. After applying the brakes, the distance covered by the cycle before coming to a rest position, that is known as braking distance. And remember, the thinking distance depends upon the, the, the condition of his brain and how, how, sh how quick is his, rea his reaction or if the reaction is slow. For example, if somebody is tired, the thinking distance depends upon the rider, his condition. If the rider is tired, his thinking distance will be longer. He will be reacting very slowly. For example, if the rider is, for example, he's, he has taken some medicine, uh, he is under the influence or he is drunk. In all these cases, what happens, the reaction time becomes very large. So his thinking distance will be larger. So thinking distance depends upon the mental condition or the brain or the you can say if the rider is tired or fresh or is drunk or he's under the influence the braking distance depends upon the quality of the brakes it depends upon the friction it depends between the tire and the road it depends upon uh, the condition of the tires so braking distance depends upon some other factors and thinking distance depends upon totally rider. And you know, if I add both these distances, thinking distance and the braking distance, that gives me the stopping distance. 
okay so if i add thinking distance plus the breaking distance this is equals to the stopping distance do you understand this idea before we start this question hello yes sir so we have stopping distance equals to thinking distance plus the breaking distance so this is a question about the state the energy change that occurs during braking so you see when you apply brakes we hope that the rider would stop pedaling so he will be no more pedaling so he has applied the brakes so the common sense says that he will be he has stopped pedaling so his their question is uh what are the energy changes so when you apply brakes so you give uh, so the, the brake pads they come and rub against the rim of your tire so there is friction and due to that friction the brakes actually the braking process takes place so when the tire is is, is jam then the tire will have friction with the road and due to that friction the tire will stop that bicycle will stop so you see it involves friction whenever you apply brakes it involves friction so whenever there is friction the energy will be converted finally into heat or thermal energy in this case one point is very important that the man is not pedaling we hope that when you have applied the brakes after applying the brakes you do not pedal so the cycle has so don't start this answer with the chemical potential energy of the human no start it with the kinetic energy of the bicycle and that will convert into the heat energy or thermal energy so state the energy change that occurs during the braking kinetic energy will convert into thermal energy it's a two mark question let me show you the marking scheme uh here we have the kinetic energy at the start and the thermal energy or heat energy or internal energy at the end kindly write this answer in your book uh, i mean notebook so once you are written uh, somebody can read the answer also are you done with this if you have written your answer you can read that answer so we can uh, confirm to that this good Hello anybody has written the answer Okay, so we are starting the B part. A ball rolls in front of a cyclist at the time t is equals to zero, and the cyclist breaks and comes to rest. Figure twelve point two shows the speed time graph for the cyclist. So here we have a speed time graph on the y axis. The speed is given. On the x axis, the time is given. so in the speed time graph or the velocity time graph you know the area under the graph represents the distance traveled area under the graph represents the distance traveled 
and the slope of the speed time graph give you the acceleration i don't know what are the questions asked but these are the two basic basic things using the figure 12.2 determine the reaction time of the cyclist the reaction time you can see uh, he says okay so the reaction time you can see is how much 0.4 second from the graph here at zero he saw the he saw the you know the ball rolling on the road and after he saw it and then his brain processed it and when he pressed the pedal brake pedal 0.4 seconds have passed so this is his reaction time so 0.4 second is his reaction time do you understand yes sir okay so the next question is using the figure 12.2 calculate the thinking distance the thinking distance his question is thinking distance okay so let me copy it from here so i can show you how we do this thing okay so let us let us take this into the paint 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 open up paint yeah okay so here so i have brought that distance time graph into the paint so his question is how much is the distance traveled how much is the distance traveled by the object the distance traveled is equals to the area under the he says distance traveled during the thinking okay so this no no i made whole thing that so if you find this area this area oh no this area this rectangle if you find the area of this rectangle this is the reaction time so if you find the area under this rectangle you will observe what will happen this area find this area okay find this area area in this uh, rectangle you see if you find this area can you calculate this area you see it is uh, the one dimension is 7 meter per second and the other dimension is 0.4 so you simply multiply on your calculator multiply uh, 7 meter per second and you multiply it with 0.4 so 2.8 meters so during the thinking time or reaction time 2.8 meters were covered so the thinking distance is 2.8 meter beta do you understand this 2.8 meter yes sir okay good very good very good okay now let's see what's the next part he says uh, okay using the figure 12.2 calculate the thinking distance we are done with this state how the breaking distance is found using the figure 2.2 we don't have to calculate but he is saying uh just describe or state how the breaking distance is calculated from this figure so here the brakes are applied let me change the color okay now if you want to find out the area uh, you want to find out the distance covered during the breaking you simply find the area under to find the area during this process so it's a you can see 
it is a triangle just find the area under this triangle okay the area under the speed time graph from 0 0.4 second to 2.4 second it is in the shape of a triangle so by applying the formula 1 by 2 into base into height in your mathematics you should have learned You can find out the area under the graph and that will be the equals to the distance traveled. Okay. So you can find out the area. This blue color area. This is the area under the graph. This is the area under the graph. So this area will be equal to the breaking distance. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Let me show you. The, the marking scheme is showing on your screen. It says area under the graph or time difference multiple average speed or 1 by 2 into time difference into initial speed. So you can write this answer that find the area under the speed time graph from 0 0.4 second to 2.4 seconds. That will give you the breaking distance. Okay. The next question. The next question on another occasion. The same cyclist travels at an initial speed of 5 meters per second. A ball rolls in front of the cyclist at t is equal to 0. The cyclist has the same reaction time and the deceleration of the cyclist is the same as in the figure 2.2. On the figure 2.12.2, sorry, draw the new speed time graph for the cyclist. It's a two mark question. Let me go back. Let me copy it again. We have to draw a speed time graph here. He has given us some data. Okay. He says the initial speed. Let me read you the question. On another occasion, the same cyclist travels at an initial speed of 5 meter per second. A ball rolls in front of the cycle at t equals to 0. The cyclist has the same reaction time and the deceleration of the cycle is the same as in the figure 12.2. On the figure 12.2, draw the new speed time graph. Two mass questions. Okay. So his speed is five meter per second. Okay. Okay. We will draw this. Let me choose the, okay. So I'm going to draw it with the, let's say red color. Okay. So his speed is five. So where is the five speed? One, two, three, four, five. So here. And his reaction time is still 0 0.4. Okay. You see this first red line I have drawn because the cyclist speed is 5 meter per second and uh, his reaction time is same. So you can see I have drawn a red line, a red line. Then he applies brakes and the deceleration produced this time is equal to the deceleration in the first case. And I told you that in the speed time graph, the slope or the gradient of this graph represents the deceleration. So if in the second case the deceleration is same, it means that uh, the slope of this second graph should be also equal to the first slope of the first graph. So the slope, how I will do that? 
I will draw a line which will be parallel to the first line. So, yeah. No. Are they parallel? No. I think now they are parallel to each other. You see, the slope of both the graphs should be same. Why? Because in both the cases, the deceleration is same. And the deceleration is represented by the gradient of the speed time graph. So in the, in the second case, if the deceleration is same as that of the first case, both this black and the red, they should be parallel to each other. I have tried to draw a parallel line. So now they represent both, both of them represent the uh, same deceleration. Now, see, this is a two mark question and I have drawn it. But do you understand it? Yes, sir. Okay. So we can move to the next part. The next part is The breaking distance is longer. The breaking distance is longer when the cyclist stops on a wet road. Explain why. Three marks per. So wet, wet road means there is water on the road. Might be more water, might be less water, might be a small, a very thin film of the water. When there, the road is wet. When the road has water on it, due to this what happens, the friction between the tire and the road, that reduces due to the presence of the water between the road and the tire, the friction between the road and the tire will decrease. So due to less friction between the tire and the road, there will be less deceleration. And when there will be less deceleration, the cycle will cover a longer distance before coming to rest, before coming to a stop. When the road is wet, there will be water between the road and the tire. So the water will be acting like a lubricant. So this will reduce the friction between the road and the tire and the braking distance will become longer because now there will be less deceleration. It's a three mark question. Let me show you the marking scheme as well. You see one mark is writing that there will be less friction and the second mark is for saying there will be less deceleration. And the uh, or less force backward, less friction, the graph will be less steep or less force opposing motion, same kinetic energy loss work done by friction. And B is longer time to stop or larger area under the speed time graph. Or work done is work done is force into distance to light factor. Okay. So the, the cycle will cover longer distance, it will take longer to stop the cycle when the road is wet. But do you understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So will you be able to write this answer? Yes. Okay. Okay, then let's go to the next part. It's a three mark question. Very, 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 very important. Okay. Now, here a diagram is shown. Let me read it. He says figure 12.3 shows a hydraulic braking system of the cycle. The cyclist applies a force on the brake lever 
This increased the pressure in the oil by 1.2 x per 6 pascal. The cross-sectional area of the piston R is 5 x per minus 5 meter square. Calculate the force as applied by the brake lever. You know, uh, let me bring it here. So, you know that the pressure is equals to force divided force divided by area. If you want to calculate force, if you want to calculate force, that will be equals to pressure. It will be equals to pressure multiply area. So we know the pressure and we know the area. Do you have calculator with you? Any one of you have the calculator with you? If you have your calculators with you, you can do this calculation. Let me take, let me. So on your calculator, you see this calculator, you will write uh, the pressure 1.2 x per 6 multiply 5.0 x per minus 5. You on your calculator, you will write this and you press equals to. The answer is 60. The answer is 60 newton. It's a two marks numerical. Let me check the marking scheme. Yeah, the answer is 60 Newton. Do you understand this numerical? Do you understand this? Sir, sir, explain Sorry. Zara, I was not able to hear you. Sir, I can you that you can explain again. Okay. So here the pressure is given and the area is given. And we know the formula for the pressure is pressure equals to force divided by area. And he wants you to calculate force. So if the force, I will make F the subject of the formula, the A which is dividing with the F, it will go on the other side and it will multiply. So F is equals to P multiply A. The value of the P is 1.2 X per 6 Pascal. And the value of the A is 5.0 X per minus 5. So simply put these two values in your calculator and equals to. And you will get the answer 60 Newton. Yes. Now you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. So let's move to the next part. Is the last part of this question. The force applied to each of the brake pads is larger than F. Explain why. He says the force applied to each of the brake pads is larger than F. You see, uh, the pressure, the pressure which is transmitted through the hydraulic system. You can see this is a hydraulic system. So this is the piston. And this piston was pushed, uh, I, you can say, downward. And here we have oil. And when this push, this piston pushed downward, moved downward, this oil was pushed downward. So the whole pressure, which was the pressure, which uh, which is one point two F per six, the the pressure, same pressure is transmitted here on the other end of that tube. 
This is Pascal's law that in the liquid, whatever pressure you created on one end, the same pressure is transmitted to the other end in an incompressible liquid. So we hope that oil is incompressible. So the pressure, whatever the pressure you have here, the same pressure is here. But you know the pressure is equals to uh, force divided by area. And here the try to understand this logic. Here the area is very large. You can see here where the here oil will come here and it will push this brake pads. So here the area is larger. So the force created here will be also larger because the pressure is supposed to remain same. So if the area becomes larger and the force will not increase, the pressure value will not be the same. According to the Pascal's law, when the oil, whatever the pressure you created on one end, the same pressure will be created on the other end. The same pressure will be transmitted by the oil to the other side. And there, the brake pads, their area is larger and the pressure is same. So the force will also be larger. Because when you the pressure is same, area is larger. So the force is pressure multiply area. So the pressure is same and the area is larger. So the answer of the force will also be larger. Let me check the marking scheme. It's a, lit, a little, a little uh, difficult to write the answer. It's a two-mark question. You have to write it with the full logic. You see, he says one mark is for saying that the same pressure is transmitted to the brake pads. And one mark is, so, say, uh, is uh, for saying that the brake pads has larger area, so the force created there will be also larger. It's a two mark question. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. So, I hope that you have uh, gained some understanding into this concept. Um, today, we were doing May, June 2016, 2 1 uh, paper. It's a theory paper of the physics. And we were doing it's section B only. I have done two questions of this section B with the 11 Cambridge class and one question was left. And I've done one question with the 10 Cambridge class because this is also included in their syllabus. And this concept is not in, in, in the book of physics matter. So I hope that you have understood. So we are done with the section B of the May, June 2016 to 1. So... Uh, I hope that you have understood. So I, I think it's enough for today. So have a good day.